comprehensive plan is the vision for the city that's developed with intense community input. So it's a very bottoms up idea of what the city should be uh, and what the city can be. The time horizon is 20 years. However, this isn't a plan where everything's in kind of going on for 20 years and then boom, we have a city. This process will create a baseline for where we're at and the vision will be quantified by having data that where we want to get to. So what the purpose of the plan is, is to lay out for every 20 years, every, every 10 years, every five years, every year, what are the milestones we're going for to achieve that 20 year vision. So the community has to have buy-in of this and that's why it's so important that everybody's here and that everybody is providing the data and the input to make this plan a success. Hello and welcome everyone to Word in the Berg, another installment. Uh, this month we're going to be talking about planning in the city of Harrisburg and how we can all come together to plan for our future. Whether it's housing or transportation or economic development, what are your thoughts and how can we combine those into a comprehensive vision for the future of the city of Harrisburg and the region? I'm Eric Pappenfuss and I'm joined today by three very distinguished guests. We have Mrs. Evelyn Hunt, who is a member of the steering committee and also a city resident. We have Jeffrey Knight, who is the planning director for the city of Harrisburg. And we have Tara Leo Aki, who is a member of the consulting team, which is advising the city of Harrisburg and will be conducting a whole series of public workshops this month and next that will hopefully get all of you involved. So we're going to begin very broadly and, uh, and talk about what is a comprehensive plan. I know there's been a lot of discussion about this uh, in the media. Uh, Jeffrey, let me start with you. As, a, as our planning director, what is a comprehensive plan for a city? Why is it important? And uh, why should people care about uh, what's going to go on now here over the next several months? Well, the comprehensive plan, as you noted earlier, is a uh, vision for the city over the next 20 years, and it guides the growth and development that occurs over the city during that time. Uh, the reason it's important is because a comprehensive plan, a vision for the city, should, be, should belong to the community. Uh, and currently, and it should be kind of reflecting current trends in growth and development, and currently we're working with a 41-year-old comprehensive plan that frankly doesn't address the problems and issues that the city is dealing with today. Uh, so it's important that we as a community come together to help shape and decide what our city is going to look like in 20 years and how we're going to go about doing that. Uh, the reason it's so important is because uh, over a 20 year period a lot can change in terms of politics, in terms of uh, issues that confront uh, the city and it's important that we have a guiding document to kind of refer to so that whenever we have projects they tend to um, build on one another instead of being done in ad hoc fashion and uh, really not reaping the rewards of having them all uh, balance each other out and build on each other's success. Sure. And as a quick follow-up, as the planning director for the city, how would you envision utilizing this comprehensive plan and, and, and what do you do now uh, since we don't really have an up-to-date one? Uh, well, a comprehensive plan is especially useful to our planning commission um, in terms of the variance and special exception cases they review and our land development plans. Um, a comprehensive plan is supposed to guide them in saying, well, this matches with what the vision of the city is supposed to be, or this doesn't match, so here's a way we can change that particular project. Uh, to more conform to what the city kind of envisions itself being. Um, and without that, decisions have to be done on an ad hoc basis and there's really no um, justification in some cases for making a recommendation one way or another without a larger global vision in place for what those uh, recommendations do as far as the community benefit. I think that's a good way to describe it. Uh, a larger global vision for the city, maybe a, a statement of guiding principles, but sort of a, a, a document that can constantly be referred to to give guidance as to what the collective will of, of the public is uh, with regard to development in the city. Mrs. Hunt, uh, it's good to see you. When we were getting ready to start the comprehensive plan, uh, Jeffrey, uh, as planning director for the city, tried to assemble a representative steering committee of, um, of individuals from every neighborhood in the city, uh, from all sorts of diverse backgrounds. And that formed a group which eventually um, made the selection of the consultants, which are going to be uh, in town um, working uh, with the public to help design 
designed this new plan. Can you talk a little bit about your experiences on the steering committee and uh, what you've learned from that and, and maybe uh, what you're most excited about now as we move into the next phase? Well, the steering committee is made up of 23 people from the city and we have people that represent the neighborhoods as well as the businesses, various small businesses, large businesses, uh, the, uh, the cities. Um, we have people from city council on. But what I found most interesting was actually going out we're beginning to start to go out and talk to the public and get them involved because all too many times when plans are made the people that are affected by the plans are not brought in to give their um, ideas and what they want so basically this is going to be a very exciting process going out to the public and then having the public come to our um, events so we can hear what they want and can you talk a little bit about the selection process for the group of consultants that were, were chosen to help uh, work with the city and the public? Well, each cons uh, when we first went in, we determined what we were looking for in consultants. We did an open bid. There were six consultants that were narrowed down for all of us to look at. We each got what appeared to be hundreds of pages of documents <laughs> to read and to go through and see how many of them uh, fit the categories that we were looking for. We wanted people who were familiar with working in uh, river cities. We wanted people who were familiar with working in nonprofit cities that had a lot of nonprofits, uh, people that worked in government. So, and we wanted people who, uh, were familiar with Harrisburg, this area. We wanted people that were going to be here and we could actually talk to. And that was exciting. And I was very pleased out of the six, I sat in on the interview and I was right on who I selected. <laughs> good, good. And, and we are very privileged because we are joined by a member of, of that team right now. What a setup. I know, right that's now. what I was thinking. Uh, we have Tara Leo Aki here. Uh, and um, Tara, let's start. Can, can you describe your team? Because it really is quite a team that's been assembled to help uh, Harrisburg with this process. Well, the team is a firm that is, resides in the city of Harrisburg mm -hmm. called OPA. It's the Office of Planning and Architecture. That team then, um, from that firm, uh, the team was brought together for their professional skill level. We have transportation specialists, we have housing specialists, we have urban land design specialists, and of course we have planners and architects on the team, as well as engineers. I'd be remiss not to say that we have engineers. Um, as Ms. Evelyn says many times, and the team always comments on those from inside of the city and outside of the city, the city has such good bones. It was laid out beautifully. We just need to sort of go in and decide where we need to make maintain it, where we need to adjust it, and to set it up for the future. So our team has local members that are then paired with members from out of town. And that really creates a wonderful dynamic for us as professionals because we're able to have this institutional knowledge and this residential care and passion for the city. At the same time, we get these firms from outside the city, the, these professionals that are able to come in and, as Jeffrey said so well, have a global view of our city without some of the um, yeah, I always say sometimes we hold our hand too close to our face and it's difficult to tell exactly what the options and possibilities are. So this, this pairing up of local with out of town I think is one of the most significant and most empowering parts of our team. Yes, I think it's, I think it's particularly exciting and it should, uh, it should give um, all the residents of Harrisburg a real uh, a local access point as mm -hmm. well as a national reference yes. when having these conversations. So let's talk about how uh, people watching this show can get involved. And the first step I would say is that we're going to be having a whole series of public meetings. Mm -hmm. And you can find out the dates for these meetings, uh, when they're going to be in your neighborhood at our website, which is B HBG, B E H B G. Um, but if, uh, if a member of the public were to come out to one of these, uh, these public meetings, uh, what should they expect? Well, they should expect to engage. 
I think that's going to be the most significant thing that every resident of the city should believe in, that this process really is from the bottom up. Um, typically, we have so many uh, top-down processes, and that's the general nature of public processes in general, or at least the, the concept of them. But we are really working together as a team, and I mean team as a whole team, the consultants team, the city, and the steering committee, to really be deliberate about engaging the public and everyone within their neighborhoods. So I think anyone who comes to any of these first six um, phase one public forums, that's what they're called, they begin um, in June to lay out the idea the idea phase. What are your ideas? What are your visions for the city? What do you as residents believe that the city needs, should be, and could achieve? And that's going to be the premise of these entire meetings. That as well as to um, introduce the public to what a comprehensive plan is and to the team as well. So we have it divided into different parts so that the public can feel confident with what they're being asked to do, which is give us our ideas and prioritize them. Because that's the most significant thing I think planners need, is not just a content of ideas, but also an idea of how the public would like to see certain things implemented and when. So come with your ideas, participate, mm -hmm. uh, be ready to participate, yes. and comment about whatever aspects of the plan most interest you. One of the nice things I, I thought about uh, reviewing the, the agenda for this evening and for future meetings uh, was that you're going to have activities for children as yes. well. Yes, I'm glad you those? say that. Yes, yes. We're very excited that um, there are enough of us working on the team that have worked with youth and children. So that's always a theme that we have at these planning sessions. How do we engage everyone um, as the steering committee? I think Ms. Evelyn can say on the steering committee, we talk as a group how um, the audience of this process is so broad from young to old, from people who have lived here their entire lives to people who we hope to keep here in our city with their ideas and their skills and their talents. So that's really important for us to have the children draw their ideas. We have um, a, what are we calling it, Jeff? It's our creative role. I think so, yes. Right, and it's just it's... this ongoing role of children's drawings that we've already gone out into the community and started. And we'll be carrying that around to every single meeting. And we're not forgetting those tweeners and teeners either. That The ones that really have some of the most keen, astute ideas about what this city could be for them to stay here and be here. So we have some exercises too to engage them with the website, with the social media, as well to get in there and ask them some questions that perhaps no one has ever asked them before. What do you want to see outside, out of your city? I think that's great and it also uh, speaks to the fact that this is really for, for the whole family. It's for, it's, yes. it's for all ages. Everyone can come and participate mm -hmm. uh, regardless of particular uh, interest and the key to the process is going to be soliciting as much public input as possible so that yes. there's real buy-in so that when we're done we've got a plan that everybody says that's that's my plan and I was a part mm -hmm. of that that process Jeffrey can you talk a little bit about the website because that's part of it now not everyone can come out to a public meeting hopefully they can there will be uh, uh, workshops coming up towards the end of July that are going to deal with key issues like housing and transportation lots of opportunities to get physically involved but there's also the opportunity to go on the BEHBG website and comment and interact. So walk us through that a little bit, Jeffrey, because I thought the website was, was really, really well done. Right. Uh, the website, I think, is actually the most interesting uh, perspective of what we're doing here in the comprehensive plan process because I think it's different than many other municipalities' comprehensive plans that tend to be, you know, very cut and dry, this is our public outreach period, this is where we develop ideas, this is where we take it back to the community. This has like a an aspect where it goes the entire process and actually goes beyond that process. We will be given the BHBG website after our comprehensive plan is developed from primarily the ideas that uh, appear on that site. Um, so it's not just a vehicle for the comprehensive plan, but it's a vehicle for ongoing change and ongoing development and ongoing collaboration between not only the community and the city, but within the community, between community and developers. Like they're saying, like it's the community saying what they want. And it's us listening to that and hopefully you know, encouraging that kind of development here in the city. And so by the, by the very fact that it goes beyond the comprehensive plan is 
it's a p it's a piece of the comprehensive plan that continues the whole way through the time horizon and it kind of ensures that it's a living breathing document and it's not uh, just a point in time snapshot that then goes on a shelf and gathers dusk. It's a living, breathing plan, which is really what these documents are supposed to be. Great. And so how does it work? I, I know you walked me through it. I found it very easy to sign up and right. register. Mm -hmm. But it's basically a, a series of active discussions right. uh, on, on uh, organized around specific topics, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, what would people find when they go to the website? Um, well, you can find just about anything actually on the website because anybody can post. You have to register and within a day, usually shorter than that, uh, the, comp the consultant team will have you know, reviewed your request, will have okayed you, and you'll be ready to post to the website, post ideas, comment, like ideas. Uh, so it's very uh, democratized in that regard. Um, yeah, anything could come up on there. You could have somebody say, I want a gondola from City Island to the archives. and you know, put a picture of a gondola up there that they download from the website, from Google, very easy to do. Uh, and if they get enough, you know, people that like that idea and it spurs comment, maybe there's somebody out there that wants to see that happen. Uh, so it's very easy to post an idea, you know, say where you want that idea to happen, put a picture up so that gives somebody, you know, that's maybe a better visual learner uh, an idea of what you're talking about. And then that's kind of really how the conversation starts for that particular idea. And there's a thread then that's below that where people can talk to one another, maybe make suggestions on how to improve it. Maybe they say like, yeah, this isn't good for here, but it might belong somewhere else. Um, so, you know, it's a very intuitive design how they've got it so that anybody can post and they can post anything and anybody can comment on anybody else's post. So it's very open and it really encourages, I think, bringing any idea to the best possible conclusion. It really says this needs to be focused this way, but does so in a very broad-based, uh, community-involved way. Well, that's great. And uh, I think people find it's very easy to sign up and mm -hmm. very easy to, to start commenting and getting involved in that way. And it will also um, have sort of up-to-date uh, information about when the meetings are and what's happening. People can also visit the city planning mm -hmm. website, which is also a very useful website, which is uh, links to our zoning maps mm -hmm. and a variety of other things. And that's at harrisburgpa.gov slash planning. Um, Ms. Hunt. I have a comment. Yes. In addition to the wonderful websites and the public meetings that we are having, I think one of the things that we're also going to try to do is go to where the public might be. Uh, we have uh, events like the Multicultural Day, we have events in Reservoir Park, and we have events that happen in the city that we are going to go to the public because this city, not everyone is computer literate, not everyone has a computer, not everyone will go to these events, but they may go to others. So we have members that are uh, going to be with uh, representing the churches, businesses. So we're going to make sure we go to them if they don't come to us. So look for, uh, look for the table uh, <laughs> at the festival or yeah. the booth mm -hmm. and uh, get involved. And I think uh, in making, whatever we do, making it mm -hmm. easy for the public to get involved is, is, is really key. Ms. Hunt, what excites you most about the comprehensive plan? Do you have particular areas um, uh, that, uh, that you're really most interested in participating and giving feedback in? I want to know from the public, what can Harrisburg do to make you want to stay here? What can Harrisburg do that you would tell other people, this is a good city to live in? You tell me what you want, I'll take this back. We can see, but if we don't get your input, we can't work on what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And the people that are on the steering committee, especially the people that represent the neighborhoods, eventually I'm sure all of our names are going to be printed somewhere, and a lot of us are fairly well known in the communities. This is a job that we took with the idea of we're going to do this for the next one or two years. If you happen to see me somewhere and you say, hey, you're on the steering committee. Well, this is what my problem is or this is what I would like to see. I will take that back and I will make a note of it because we need your input.
Well, that sounds that sounds great. And and Tara, you have a background in, in communication. Um, you've uh, you've dedicated years of your life to uh, trying to foster civic engagement mm -hmm. and um, create a sort of uh, informed uh, public opinion about all sorts mm -hmm. of different issues. What do you see as the um, as the keys to a, a successful communication strategy here for the comprehensive plan? I think the key is to work within the community mm -hmm. at the very most um, grassroots level. That is, as Ms. Evelyn said, for us to map out where we need to go, where we need to be, to go to places that perhaps community members aren't used to someone coming and asking them to engage in a public process. Um, we've, in May, one of the very first things we did was understand that we had to introduce this plan to the public before we started um, designing the process. So we had to go out and get the public's input even on some design issues, like what should this name be? This B, HBG, is because the public decided what this name should be. It's a good name. It is a good HBG. name, I think I was is. impressed. <laughs> the public. So a good start. An it was a good start. And what we found going out and spending hours out in the community is that the people just appreciated the fact that we were sitting there bringing something to them that really hadn't started yet, that that was the moment, that that mm -hmm. was the start. And that is a commitment that the entire team, again, the steering committee, city, and consultant team, is complete collaborative agreement with, is that we must continue to have a multifaceted approach to community engagement, and a lot of that is us as representatives of our arms, if you mm -hmm, will, mm -hmm. has to go out there and have a presence and be known and be champions for this process. Yes, and I'll say from a, a governing standpoint, um, we we want a guiding document. We mm -hmm. we, we want uh, uh, whether it's uh, our, our our zoning code or um, approvals of economic uh, development projects. Mm -hmm. We we want those to be based on a coherent set of principled ideas. Right. And the fact that we don't have that, and it's been forty years since we've had mm -hmm. that, just makes our job harder. And it and 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 getting the public involved at this point will lay the foundation, I think, for, for good civic engagement and good governance moving mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey, let's talk a little bit about, um, about zoning, because I, I know that uh, um, when this is all over, um, it could lead to a, a complete overhaul or at least a major series of revisions for the zoning code. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got the uh, zoning code map up over there. Uh, that was developed on a um, kind of almost a really small comprehensive plan process when they originally developed it. Um, they had they went out to the community and got community development objectives, which uh, were good and revolutionary for the city here at the time this was originally developed, but they're kind of a poor substitute for a full comprehensive vision for the city. Uh, so, as you said, after the comprehensive plan is adopted, uh, we'll begin work shortly thereafter on a zoning code. Uh, the comprehensive plan is the vision aspect of the city, uh, and but the zoning code is the legal mechanism by which you enact that vision. So we can't just tell developers or a property owner, well, do what's in that code. I mean, there's no legal support behind that. There's nothing compelling them to do that. So the zoning code says, this is the vision and here are the rules we have to reach that vision uh, and that is in itself is a full public process outreach so it's kind of another layer of going back to the public and saying this is what you've told us you wanted and this is how we intend on s ensuring that that vision is carried out uh, so the zoning code is actually the the front line of the comprehensive plan um, and it's you know very important in terms of making sure that our development is compatible not only in neighborhoods next to one another but even just within neighborhoods mm -hmm. and i know we adopted a, a new bridge zoning code last year it had mm -hmm. been many years since we'd had a revision of the zoning code we felt we needed to do that to give us something uh, more modern and updated and reflective of the city uh, to get us through this process but the goal Goal is to go back and to use the input here to revise that. So if people felt um, left out of that process or were concerned about certain aspects of it, now's the, the chance for everyone to get engaged. Yeah. So uh, Ms. Hunt, uh, final thoughts. Why should the public uh, care? Why should they get involved uh, in this new comprehensive plan initiative? If they want to see certain improvements 
as I said before, we can't do what we don't know you want us to do. And basically, this is your city. If you want to be proud of it and want it to improve, you have to take a helping hand doing it. That's right. You want to see a park someplace. You want to see uh, everything. You know, something as small as uh, as, as as a stop sign mm -hmm. or something as large as uh, a housing development. If you have thoughts mm -hmm. or ideas about where you want these to be, where you don't mm -hmm. want these to be, now is the chance to be heard because this document will set that uh, that that sort of stage for all future development. Uh, Tara, some final thoughts. Um, why, why do you hope people will, 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 will come out and um, uh, is there anything in particular that you're, that you're really uh, hoping to engage the public on yourself? I believe that this city has such incredible potential and that the way to meet that potential is for us to come together and rise above the differences that are perceived in this city and create that collective vision, to use your word, that this is a collective vision and that this is our opportunity and sets a tone for what can happen with this capital city along the river. We're a very special place and everyone who lives in and around this city are stewards of this very special place. And what I would like to say to the public is to trust this process. There is a really, really, really good team in place that care and we have to trust one another in order to meet this objective, which is to create this future for the city of Harrisburg and to meet those potentials. That's not going to happen, though, if the people don't engage, if they decide that mm -hmm. this is something they can't trust, that they don't want to be a part of because they don't think it's really going to happen. This is going to happen. And the more of us that it can make it happen together, the more real it'll be. Well, I want to thank you all for, for coming and participating today. And that's right, the process is going to happen. And we've laid out a lot of different ways in which you, the public, can, can engage. Come on out to one of our, our, our public meetings that are scheduled for this, me this month of June and into July. Find out about them on the BHBG website. Uh, sign into the website and comment on things that you like or don't like. Um, or look for us at upcoming festivals or events in the city uh, and give us your, your feedback that way. In any way you wish, please get involved because this is our opportunity to collectively plan for the next generation uh, here in the city of Harrisburg. Thank you all for watching Word in the Berg. We will be back again next month with another show. And in the meantime, please get involved in our planning process for the city. Mm -hmm.